We are now transitioning to our unit on counting and probability. So this is going to be looking at chapters 12 and 13 in our textbook. So we're going to begin with section 12.1. And in 12.1, we're going to be looking at different ways of counting outcomes to an event. So one way to count a set of outcomes is to create a systematic list. So when we're counting, we literally want to list out all of the possible outcomes that could occur. So for example, if a coin is flipped two times, list all the possible outcomes, how many different outcomes are possible? So if I let H represent heads and T represent tails, we're going to just list all of the possible outcomes if we flip a coin two times. So when we flip a coin the first time, it's possible that the coin could land on heads or it could land on tails. So if it lands on heads, then for the second flip, it's also possible that the coin could land on heads or it could land on tails. So it's possible that I could get heads on the first flip and then heads again on the second flip. So this is one possible outcome, heads, heads. Now it's also possible I could get heads on the first flip but then get tails on the second flip. So this is a second possible outcome. Now if I get heads on the first flip, these are the only outcomes that can result. If I get heads on the first flip, then I can either get heads on the second flip or tails on the second flip. Now on the other hand, I could get tails on the first flip. And if I get tails on the first flip, then I could get heads on the second flip. Or if I get tails on the first flip, I could get tails on the second flip. So if I flip a coin two times, these are the possibilities. I could get heads on the first flip, heads on the second flip, heads on the first flip, tails on the second flip, tails on the first flip, heads on the second flip, tails on the first flip, tails on the second flip. So we've listed all of the possible outcomes. And then the second question is how many different outcomes are possible? So the answer to that question is four. If I flip a coin two times, there's four possible outcomes. And again, those outcomes are heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, tails, tails. Let's take a look at example two. Example two, if a coin is flipped three times, list all of the possible outcomes. How many different outcomes are possible? Well, we can actually build the results of example two from what we determined in example one. So here we have two flips in example one. So if I have a third flip, then for each one of these outcomes, there would be two possibilities. I could get heads on the third flip or tails on the third flip. So if I get heads on the first flip and heads on the second flip, then I could possibly get heads on the third flip or I could get tails on the third flip. So I could have heads, 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 or heads, heads, tails. That's if I get heads on the first two flips. Now, if I get heads on the first flip and tails on the second flip, which was our second outcome when we flipped the coin twice, then for the third flip, I could either get heads, or for the third flip, I could get tails. So I could get heads, tails, heads, or heads, tails, tails. Now I could also get tails on the first flip and heads on the second flip. And if I do, then I could either get heads or tails on the third flip. So tails on the first flip, heads on the second flip, and I could get heads on the third flip. Or tails, heads, tails. So these are the outcomes that are possible. And then if I get tails on the first flip and tails on the second flip, then I could get heads on the third flip, or I could get tails on the third flip. So if you look at the way this is occurring, this is a lot like the truth tables that we did way back a long time ago. If you look at the different possibilities, so we have in, in each of these cases, there's two outcomes, heads or tails. So notice the layout here of, of the results. We got four heads, four tails. That's like for the first flip. Then we do heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, heads, tails, tails and then heads, tails, heads, tails. That's the same kind of thing we were doing with the true-false way back when we were talking about truth tables. So it's the same kind of scenario. 
So we've listed all the possible outcomes that could occur if we flip a coin three times. So how many outcomes are there? Well, all together, there are eight different outcomes if we flip a coin three times. So again, the idea here is if we want to count the number of ways things can occur, then one way that we can go about doing that is by using a systematic list. So we literally list all of the outcomes and then count them. Let's take a look at another example. Example three. The figure below gives the possible results of rolling two six-sided dice. How many ways can a sum of three occur? How many ways can a sum of seven occur? So if we roll two six-sided dice, the figure that I have right here literally lists all of the different outcomes. So it's possible the first die could land on one, and then the second die could land on one, two, three, four, five, or six. It's possible the first die could land on two, and the second die could land on one, two, three, four, five, or six, and so on. The first die could land on three, second die, one, two, three, four, five, six. The first die could land on four, and then the second die could land on one, two, three, four, five, six. Five, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is literally all of the different ways the two dice could possibly land. So altogether, there's 36 different ways the dice could land. Now, our question is, of these 36 different ways that the dice could land, how many ways can a sum of three occur? Well, if we look at this, well, like here and here, if I roll a one and a one, then that's a sum of two. If I roll a one and a two, that's a sum of three. So this result right here, this outcome results in a sum of three. In the same way, I could get a two and a one. This outcome also results in a sum of three. So if we continue on, this results in a sum of four, a sum of four, a sum of four, and so on. So altogether, if we go through the rest of this list in the figure, there's only two different ways to come up with a sum of three out of the 36 different ways the dice could land. So the answer to our question, how many different ways can a sum of three occur? Well, it can occur two different ways. So to get a sum of three, that can occur in two different ways. Now the second question was, how many ways can we get a sum of seven? Again, we have all 36 possible outcomes listed here, so we just need to look and see how many different ways can we get a sum of seven. Well, looking through here, that's a sum of two, a sum of three, a sum of four, five, six, and seven. So here's one way that we could get a sum of seven. Looking through Here's another way of getting a sum of seven. That's a sum of eight. Looking through, here's another way of getting a sum of seven. And looking through, here's another way of getting a sum of seven. And another way of getting a sum of seven. And another way of getting the sum of seven. So it's this diagonal here. A one and a six gives us a sum of seven. Two and five is a sum of seven. Three and four is a sum of seven. 4 and 3 is a sum of 7, 5 and 2 is a sum of 7, 6 and 1 is a sum of 7. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different ways that we could get a sum of 7. So there's a total of 6 ways that we could get a sum of 7 out of the 36 different ways the dice could actually land. Next we're going to look at tree diagrams. A tree diagram is a handy tool for creating a systematic list. So I want to go back and look at our first two examples to illustrate a tree diagram. So here in example one, we were flipping a coin two times and we just systematically listed the different outcomes that were possible. Well, we could use a tree diagram to aid us in figuring out that systematic list as follows. So if we think about the fact that we have the first flip and then we have the second flip and we think about the outcomes. So for the first flip, we have two possibilities. We could have heads or we could have tails. So that is two branches in a tree diagram. 
And then for the second flip, if I get heads on the first flip, then I have two possible branches for the second flip. I could have heads or I could have tails. And if I get tails on the first flip, then I could have heads on the second flip or tails on the second flip. And so this is a tree diagram that helps us figure out the systematic list. So for example, if I get heads here and then follow the branch heads here, that would be heads, heads. Or heads here, tails here, heads, tails. Tails, heads, tails, tails, which were the last two items in our list. So by using this tree diagram and drawing these branches, that will aid us in determining the possible outcomes. I could do the same kind of thing for example two. We have a first flip, we have a second flip, and we have a third flip. So the first flip, I could have heads or I could have tails. So again, that's our first two branches. And then if I get heads for the first flip, I could have heads or tails for the second flip. If I get tails for the first flip, I could have heads or tails for the second flip. And then for each one of these outcomes, I could have heads or tails for the third flip. And so again, if I follow the branches, that would give me my systematic list. So starting here and following the branches, I could go heads to heads to heads. That would be this first outcome, heads, heads, heads. Or I could go heads to heads to tails. That's the second outcome. Heads to tails to heads, third outcome. Heads to tails to tails. That's the fourth outcome. Or starting here, I could go to tails to heads to heads. That's this outcome. Tails to heads to tails, that's this outcome. Tails to tails to heads, that's the next to the last outcome. And tails to tails to tails, that's the last outcome. So again, this tree diagram aids me in coming up with our systematic list. So let's look at some new examples and use a tree diagram. So take a look at example four. The fixed price dinner at Mel's restaurant provides the following choices. Appetizer, we could have potato soup or garden salad. Entree, we could have baked chicken, sirloin steak, roast beef, or meatloaf. And then for dessert, we have vanilla ice cream or cheesecake. So we have a very limited menu. Well, we want to use a tree diagram to list the possible meals that can be ordered and then answer the question, how many different meals can be ordered? So I'm going to refer to the potato soup as soup, the garden salad as salad, baked chicken as chicken, sirloin steak as just steak, roast beef as beef, meatloaf as meatloaf, vanilla ice cream, I'm just going to say ice cream, and then cheesecake. So we have three different choices that we have to make. We have to make a choice for the appetizer, So that's our first choice. We have to make a choice for the entree. That's our second choice. And we have to make a choice for dessert. That is our third choice. Now, we're going to use a tree diagram to organize this. So for our first choice, we're either going to choose potato soup or garden salad. So we have the choices of soup or a salad. And then for each of these options, we have to make our second choice, which is going to be the chicken, the steak, the roast beef, or the meatloaf. So if I choose soup, I have four choices that I could make for the entree. If I have salad, I have four choices that I could make for the entree. And again, if I think of this as a tree diagram, I had two options, so like two branches for the appetizer. So for the entree, I could have chicken or steak or roast beef or meatloaf. Now that's if I had soup. 
If I had salad, I have the same four choices for the entree. So I could have chicken, steak, roast beef, or meatloaf. Now, for each one of these choices, I have two choices that I could make for dessert. So if I have chicken, then for dessert, I could either have ice cream or cheesecake. If I have steak, I could have ice cream or cheesecake for dessert. If I have beef, I could have ice cream or cheesecake for dessert. And if I have meatloaf, I can have ice cream or cheesecake for dessert. And the same way if I have salad and chicken, steak, beef, or meatloaf for each one of these choices, I have the two choices for dessert. So if I have chicken, I'm going to have two branches. Steak, I'm going to have two branches. Beef, I'm going to have two branches. Meatloaf, I'm going to have two branches. And each one of those branches is going to end in cheesecake or ice cream. And I reverse that from what I had been doing. So if I were to be consistent, I should have ice cream first and cheesecake second, which I'll do for the rest of these. So I'm not going to rewrite these, but if I were to make a systematic list, then my choices are, the possibilities are, that I could have soup, chicken, ice cream, soup, chicken, cheesecake, soup, steak, ice cream, soup, steak, cheesecake, soup, beef, ice cream, soup, beef, cheesecake, soup, meatloaf, ice cream, soup, meatloaf, cheesecake. Or I could have salad, chicken, ice cream, salad, chicken, cheesecake, and I reverse those. Salad, steak, ice cream, salad, steak, cheesecake. Salad, beef, ice cream, salad, beef, cheesecake. Or salad, meatloaf, ice cream, salad, meatloaf, cheesecake. So again, the idea here is that the tree diagram gives me a visual aid to help me come up with my systematic list. And particularly, we would use this tree diagram when we have a situation where maybe it's a little more challenging to try to list out the entire set of different outcomes. So at the end of this, how many different meals can be ordered? Well, if we count at the end of each branch, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So there's 16 different meals that could possibly be ordered at this restaurant. Let's take a look at number five. An urn contains three colored golf balls, one red, one white, and one blue. One ball at a time is to be pulled from the urn until all three balls have been selected. Use a tree diagram to list the different ways the balls can emerge. How many different ways are possible? So we have three different balls in an urn. We're going to pull out one ball at a time until all three have been pulled out. And so our question is, how many different ways is this possible? Well, we can use our tree diagram. So we have our first ball. We have the second ball. And we have the third ball. So, when we're starting off with the first ball, 
that first ball could either be red, it could be white, or it could be blue. Now, if the first ball's red, when we go to pull out the second ball, the red ball's already been pulled out, so there's only two possibilities left. The second ball could be white, or the second ball could be blue. If the first ball's white, when we go to pull out the second ball, there's only two possibilities. The second ball could be red, or it could be blue, because the white ball's already been pulled out. If the first ball is blue, when we go to pull out the second ball, there's only two possibilities. It could either be red or it could be white. Again, the blue ball's already been pulled out. Now, if we go to the third ball, well, if the first ball's been red and the second ball's white, then when I get to the third ball, there's only one choice left. It's blue. If the first ball's red and the second ball's blue, then there's only one choice left for the third ball, white. If the first ball's white and the second ball's red, then there's only one choice left for the third ball, that's blue. If the first ball's white and the second ball's blue, there's only one choice left. The third ball has to be red. If the first ball's blue and the second ball's red, then the third ball has to be white. If the first ball is blue and the second ball is white, then the third ball has to be red. So, if we list our different possibilities, so we could have red, white, blue, that is red, white, blue. We could have red, blue, white, red, blue, white. We could have white, red, blue, white, red, blue white, blue, red, white, blue, red, blue, red, white, and blue, white, red. So this one's a little different from the restaurant problem, looking at the meals, because we have limited options after the first option. We have limited options for the third after the second options. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six ways that the colors of the balls could come out. Again, those six ways are that we could have red first, white second, blue third, or red, blue, white, or white, red, blue, white, blue, red, blue, red, white, blue, white, red. So there's only six different outcomes that are possible in this particular case. So we have one example left, and I want to look at that on a separate video.